hey what's up everybody welcome back to the channel um in this video i'd like to talk about an issue that a lot of people seem to be having whether it's on this game or any other uh, nft uh, wax blockchain game which is the cpu memory and net <clears throat> Uh, being capped out and not allowing people to move forward with mining. This is very frustrating. I experienced that firsthand and I did a whole lot of digging trying to understand how it works. And there's not a whole lot of information really clarifying. It's a lot of regurgitated uh, information that's taken from the, I think it's the, the Wax blockchain website. But that doesn't really help out much in terms of how to, to get around it, how to work with it, and how to just kind of maximize uh, your processes during the game so that way you stay within range and you know you don't lose out on revenue all right so let's get started now first things first staking you know a lot of people ask the question is how much should i stake and, and that's the thing it's it's a dynamic issue it's not necessarily you know throw at it 100 wax and, and make it go away it doesn't work that way i have already put like 160 wax and i had some serious issues yesterday and the day before and and that's because of the lack of understanding of how the whole thing works and how to to find ways to work with it i don't want to say work around it but to work with it uh, and i'll explain later what i mean by saying that but um Basically, when you stake, you're putting some of that wax, which is, by the way, 100% goes back to you at any point you decide that I'm done with this game or I want to get some of the wax I invested into staking and I want to put it in my pocket. Uh, you can uh, unstake it and I can show you how to do that a little bit later on, but you can unstake all of that if you want. So it's yours, no matter how much you put into it, it's yours. But the problem is you can't fix the problem by constantly throwing things at it or throwing wax at it without understanding the consequences of the in-game actions on the CPU, because the CPU basically is um, the processes that go in the background, uh, in simple terms, you know, the processes that go in the background um, when you uh, you know buy transfer create any of of the nfts and the processes within the game so each one has a different um effect in terms of how much cpu it has so understanding each and every element within the game and how much resources it draws from the collective cpu and the collective net and and you know all of the other stuff that we need to understanding that is key to your success in this game or any other wax blockchain game all right so over here i let this zero out so that way i can demonstrate to you guys how this works so uh but before we get into that so basically for the net personally i have put i think two wax and I haven't had to even look at it, all right? And here, let's take a quick peek over here. Um, resources, yeah, I mean, the net, uh, I staked two wax, and that's it. I've never had to look at it again. RAM, you have to buy, okay? So you don't stake it, you buy it. But I think I did the same thing. I think I put maybe, you know, like two. I, I don't recall exactly, but I, I doubt I put more than five. So I put something very minimal, never had to look at it again. The CPU is the big pain in the butt because you know i mean over here look I, I staked 160 wax over the last week or so and you know i still have it under control i'm still mining i figured things out but it does run out super quick you know, like yesterday it was it was high i threw at it about 38 wax which was my remaining balance and it helped me with a few transactions and then all of a sudden I couldn't do anything else anymore and it was just super frustrating because yesterday was my harvest day i was super excited i just wanted to see how things look once you know i harvest all of uh, all of my crops and it just dampened the mood and i'm pretty sure it really messed a lot of people's moods too because you're trying to earn and it just say nope i'm not gonna let you all right so now that we had taken a quick look at this uh i do want you guys to be aware of where you can track those activities all right so uh let's say and i'll give you the easy shortcut all right um you can go to um blocks.io you know you might have to log in but let's say you have alcor open all right you know you're checking the prices and all that stuff 
and then you know obviously you're logged in so all you have to do to go to your you know blocks.io account is you see where it says wax over here it shows the balance of the wax that you have click on that all right this will open up that page for you and over here you're looking at your wax account and we'll come back to this in a second but you're going to want to have this one open this is incredibly important into understanding how the whole thing works all right so back to the game uh, for starters let's take a quick look at where we are right now so it says cpu used is 30.8 milliseconds out of 32. this number fluctuates because sometimes when you run out of cpu it has nothing to do with you sometimes it could be because of the fluctuation of users at any given time on the network right and there are websites that show you the traffic and the growth yesterday i was able to take a peek and maybe the issue that i was having yesterday is because there was a 69 percent increase in users that's almost double which is amazing that made me very happy but at the same time it added a lot of pressure on you know on the blockchain in terms of cpu use and and, and that's my analysis to it and then i was kind of you know this number right here was not cooperating it was it was going downwards because my slice of the cpu is getting smaller it doesn't it's, it's not like you can't put what you know a specific amount of wax and get like let's say two percent or three percent and then it's fixed no matter what happens no the more people come in that slice of the pie is going to get smaller and therefore this number right here fluctuates up and down all right this is the usage that you have used personally and this is you know the cap this is the max so it's dynamic you have to keep an eye out on it but anyway let's go back to our demonstration over here the cpu used says 30.8 now let's see what are the actions and how much they affect the cpu usage because as of now i have nearly two milliseconds worth of use left all right so let's go back here and let's mine some wood all right so and you know what i might as well mine everything so that way i have everything uh per hour i don't want to throw that off mine this thank you, sir and that thank you ma'am and the last one lovely and that's exactly what you want to see all right i was able to figure how to you know to figure out how to do things and it made this day much more easier for you and i'm about to show you how to do that now we made four transactions two for the saw one for the fishing net and one for the fishing rod let's take a look over here let's go to the blocks.io refresh so now our usage see this is the thing i noticed that when you mine the usage is very minimal over here you know it didn't even jump a whole lot plus i guess by the time i refreshed my piece of the pie just got a little bit bigger you know it was 32.8 i believe you know so and here we are you know it's it got bigger that means my percentage uh, is better and i have 88 percent as opposed to the 90 something anyway now we go down let's take it the four transactions look they're still pending it's still reversible because it hasn't been confirmed this gives us an indication that this is the transaction i just made let's click on the first one which was the saw all right we come over here it says the block number it has information about when the transaction was made the net usage and the cpu usage there we that's the one that gets most people <clears throat> 261 that's minimal okay so that's the saw all right now keep in mind every action you make in the game has different effect on the cpu usage like mining low when you start to do other things like harvesting and exchanging for gold it just you know dries the crap out of your remaining cpu super quick harvest is sucks i don't want to say is a what but it sucks because you know i had a full plot of eight seeds everything matured you know on the same day and then i started to mine mine my oh, not, not mine but harvest 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 and holy crap i mean when i started to to do that 
I ran out of CPU. I had to wait a bunch more. Now I had like 60 crops. Each one had to be done individually. When you click each one, it just, it uses a lot of CPU. So everything that you do has um, a different amount of CPU usage. Back here, and let's go to the fishing net. It did 188, not bad at all, low, all right? We will go to the saw again. For some reason, this one is a lot higher, see? I mean, it could have been that particular moment uh, you know, the, 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 the CPU usage is, is kind of congested. I mean, cause like I said, it fluctuates. It could have been that it could, whatever, but you monitor this, it gives you a huge advantage on how to play the game and constantly, uh, you know, or consistently not having that error issue. All right. Let's go to the last one and we look at it. There we go. Now we look at it, 201, exactly what you would expect. It's typically when you mine, this is the range that you should expect to see. Now they have, we have mined that, right? And right now we're at 30.74. I do have to mention something. Um, I did notice throughout the day because I kept, you know, doing actions within the game and coming back and seeing its effect on the CPU. You know, like I said, these things, they have minimal effect on the CPU. But what I did notice, which I thought was kind of odd, when you mine, and typically I do it once per hour, it just, after I mine, I expect it to go a little bit up, but in fact, it actually goes a little bit down. Uh, I can't explain why that is, but that's been my experience throughout the day. Right? It just knocks it down a notch. Which is great because you need to keep that in mind as you play because once you start to harvest, you need to you need to be smart about how you exchange it. If you exchange it all at once, you really mess yourself up and you put yourself out of major CPU. But if you divvy that thing up over a period of time where it's nice and low, like you know, for example, let's let me show you. But before before we do that, actually, let's go to the crops. I have eight crops that are ready to be harvested. Let's get number one. I'll probably run into an error in a sec because I have eight that I need to harvest. But I need to stay consistent with the schedule. I don't want to have any missed uh, waterings or claims, I should say. I mean, either or, um, because I'll start to lose some of this, you know, energy that I invested in it and it rolls back uh, depending on how many hours you missed or how many times you missed the claim. So over here we did four. Model. Last one. Please, no errors. Beautiful. Two more. Last one. Let's see the energy because it's an energy. Now uh, I have 145. Let's get. And this is going to be nice because you're going to have a bunch of stuff, a bunch of data to look at. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Come on, let's go. Uh, 470, 460 should be good. Last one. How about that? Everything went nice and smooth, not a single error. Typically, I have one or two, not even a single one. Now, I'm good for the next four hours on this, so that way this is not going to use as much energy. It's not uh, also going to use up CPU for another four hours, which is good. It's going to give my CPU the chance to kind of take it easy and chill and come down slowly to levels where I can mine when it's time to mine my wood, and it's time to harvest or to, to, to get my fish. All right, let's go back to the home screen. I like to stay at the home screen. Okay, so over here, we're done. Now, let's come to this screen. We are, before, the last time we checked it, before I did these actions, I was at 30.74. Refresh. Not bad for all those actions, not freaking bad. 31.54 milliseconds, 
and I still have a bunch more. Let's take a look at the transactions and see the effect of what we just did. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's count backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold on a second. So let me see. 20, 25. Okay, so let's, let's go to this one right here. All right. So all I did was harvest the, harvest the first four. We looked at it, which is harvest the wood and the other stuff. And then all I did was just, um, oh, I got energy. So we need to look at the energy usage as well. So um, the energy should be one of these right here. Um, anyway, let's take a look at the harvest. How about that? 127. Uh, the watering, sorry. Let's take a look at another one. 219. Let's look at another. 137. I think the 219, wait, it was the second to last. Oh, 302. So this one was uh, for the conversion of energy. See, it helps to know which button clicks you actually use uh, your CPU because this way once you understand it, you know how to work around it If you don't understand it and you're just clicking away kind of like what I was doing It's like, oh, you know, I have extra five food. Let me convert it to energy. No, I'll save all that stuff I'll save all my food until it's needed. Then I'll do it all in one chunk Then you reduce yourself what like two three clicks every few hours that adds up over the day That's you know, that does help out a whole lot Everything that you can minimize and just kind of, you know, like uh, clump up all together is great because it, it keeps your CPU usage down to the very, very basic, most required ones that you really need. All right. So we looked at this one. This was the wood hard, uh, the, the, what you call it. Uh, let's see if there's any explanation. Recovered 400. See, over here, if you look, energy recovered, and you can tell what the action was because it explains it to you right here. All right. And if you need to look more at the transaction, you can look over here, but we're not going to get into that. So let's look at some more. Uh, let's look at this one. Uh, crop ID is letting you know that it's a crop. Right? And it's letting you know it's used 144 CPU. So generally speaking, you'd expect most of these typical actions to be under 200. It's certain actions that actually cost a whole lot more. So now that you kind of understood how this works, let's do something that takes a nice ding at it, all right? So if we come back to the game, the things that really, really mess you up is yesterday when I did the harvest, I ended up getting a bunch of corn and barley. So I'm, I'm down to 31 barley, but, uh, you know, that was my ignorance yesterday and Thank God for it because it pushed me in the direction of figuring things out. But let's claim one barley, which, by the way, typically averages around 37 gold. All right. So I already converted some and I uh, repaired my tools with the gold. And I still have this and I still have a bunch of barley. So this is great. I'll have more than enough gold for this week to carry me over with the tool repairs. Let's click this one and see what happens. There we go. I just got 34 gold. Now, keep in mind, the numbers fluctuate, all right? So I got 34 gold. Other times I had 46 gold. I like to put it smack in the middle. It's it's usually closer to 37 gold for the barley, all right? So that got added over here. Now it's going to be registered in the blockchain. And let's take a look at that data, all right? By the way, I mean, it wasn't that huge of a ding, was it? Huh, interesting. But... Interesting in a good way. I, I'll never complain about that because I need to cash out a lot of those barleys, but I have to be very careful. Every time I'm going to exchange barley, I'm going to come back here and take a look. I want to make sure it does not go over like 32 points something. Then I'll start getting into all kinds of trouble. I like to keep it under 32. That I noticed this is going to give me the smoothest operation. All right. So going down here. There we go, it's pending. You look at it, asset ID, all right? And it's saying it's burn, okay? Because I burned the card and I got something else in exchange for it. If we click on it, look at that. You know, 
all the other stuff was below uh, 200, like 200-ish, 209, 219, and below. This one is a pretty good jump, you know? Like if we were to average the, the, the mineable stuff, it'll, I'll say like around 150, 170-ish. This is almost double, okay? So that's really good to know. Let's refresh one more time and take a look at our numbers. I didn't even hit 100 yet. Lovely. All right. So now I'm trying to recall when I did the final harvest. I mean, there were some error messages where it said, like, you don't have enough energy, even though the actual energy needed for that final watering was like 30, um, 30 energy. But it was saying you need to be above a threshold. So I thought that was kind of odd. I'm not sure if it's always like that or if it was like a an off, you know, off chance error where it just, you know, it just things were not working properly. I don't know. I really don't know how to explain it, but that's what happened. So I just increased my energy. I mined the last one. And then, by the way, once uh, harvest, I keep messing up with, uh, you know, interchanging some of the terminology. So I do apologize about that. I'm just tired, lack of sleep. So, you know, right now I have two claims i still have 40 so i still i'm going to be expecting to harvest next friday so anyway yeah when once you do the last one where it says 41 and then you click on the 42nd one you know it felt like it was using a lot of resources it slowed things down i should have at the time i wasn't too well aware of how to check the stats but it did feel like it was slowing things down and it kept you know pausing the game giving me the cpu error message but that also could have been shocked to other stuff. I'm not really sure. I did have heavy usage, like sloppy heavy usage. So, But I do believe that the final one, because what it does, it waters it, and then it's going to convert it into an NFT, and it's going to put it into your chest. That's going to require more work, obviously, because you're minting a new NFT. So I can guarantee you, I could scroll down and look, but I can guarantee you that it's it's a lot more than what you typically use up. So let's see, I'm just trying to think what else we could do uh, to, to cover this. I think this covers the basics of, of how this whole thing works. Once you understand it, just keep an eye out on the transactions, know how much CPU you have, right? Try your best not to make it go over 100. Now, uh, always look at this number and see if you can keep the actual usage you know, less by a couple of MSs than the maximum. If you do that, I don't want to say I guarantee you, but my experience has been for the most part, you know, because the, the blockchain fluctuates and these numbers change. For the most part, you're going to have a very smooth operations. You're going to love it. It's going to be stress-free uh, and you're going to go back to earning more because, you know, you don't want to have to wait that 24 hour cool off period until the next day. I mean, what's the point? You know, you want to earn today. You don't want to wait until tomorrow. So if you play the cards right based on your own situations, the number I'm giving you is based on how much I stake. It's based on the tools that I have. It's based on how much C, you know, CPU they draw. If you have an ax, it could be different. If you have a chainsaw, it could be different. Uh, you know, if you have a cow, it'll probably be different. So it, 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 I'm sure there are different variables. I wish I had the other NFTs so that way I could use it and show you, but I don't. What I do know is make sure to, f based on your own specific circumstances, how you set your game up to be, to keep checking and refreshing and looking at every transaction. Understand it. Once you do, you're going to have an experience kind of like what I did, where you saw it live. I went through all of this, no problem. I came here. I went, I watered all eight plants, no problem. Then I went back to the home screen and I bought myself, I mean, I exchanged myself one of the barleys. Again, no problem. So keep, keep that in mind. Your situation is different, but the basics are the same. Know what you got, know what it does, and know how to work around it. With that, I hope you guys have found this helpful. I know I wish somebody had directed me and pointed me to some of this information earlier. I could have saved myself a whole lot of grief, 
but it's okay. I think the best way to learn is from your own mistakes. I have made them. I hope the information I passed on to you is going to help you avoid those mistakes and have a more enjoyable experience playing the game and earning money, obviously. So uh, good luck to all. I hope, you know, the best of earnings to everybody. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the, the, the video and you found it useful, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification button because there will be more videos. The next upcoming video is going to cover um, my first week's rewards, how much I made, uh, all the tools that I had, everything that I did, my setup, etc., etc. It's going to cover all of that stuff so that way you guys know what to expect with a scenario like the one I have. Again, thank you for watching and have a great day.